All 31 Grand Prix drivers assembled in South Africa for the start of the 1982 racing season have refused to take their cars onto the Kyalami circuit to practice or race. In reply, the governing body FISA says it will cancel the driver's racing licenses, perhaps for good, and postpone Saturday's race. That threat has been temporarily lifted, providing the drivers turn out for practice tomorrow morning. Philip Hayton reports. This was the Kyalami circuit near Johannesburg this morning, with everything set for the official practice laps for Saturday's Grand Prix. The cars had been assembled and tuned. The only thing missing, the drivers. 31 of them sat in a bus after walking off the track. But when they attempted to leave the circuit, they ran up against a roadblock. A minibus had been used to sabotage their escape. After a few minutes of angry exchanges, Jacques Lafitte got off the bus to remove the obstruction. He seemed to have more trouble with the minibus than with his Ligier. After making their escape, the drivers, with an escort of newsmen, headed for a Johannesburg hotel. The drivers are unhappy with clauses in what are called their super licenses, issued by FISA, the sports controlling organization. Among other things, the drivers don't want to reveal personal financial information. Former world champion Nicky Lauda, who's due to make his racing comeback this year, had this to say. Well, it's funny because the only reason I'm here for is race. So, let's hope it's happening soon. You're not thinking about giving it up no. because of these problems? No. <laughs> not so easy. <laughs> Organizers of the South African Grand Prix acted as go-betweens, traveling between the rival factions in a military helicopter, an indication perhaps of the government's concern. While officials met at the racetrack all day, former world champion James Hunt offered his solution to settle the dispute. They're backed up against the wall. I think it's a great shame that, that uh, a strike should take place. I mean, I personally think that what both sides should do right now is say, show of all the problems for the purposes of this weekend, the powers that be could waive the whole problem of super licenses, just let everybody get in their cars and drive and have a race, with an agreement to go back and meet uh, in Europe, round the table properly, and thrash the whole thing out before the next Grand Prix for which there's plenty of time. South Africa is starved of much international sport, so the Grand Prix has taken on an added significance. As a cabinet minister has put it, the Grand Prix, with its 600 million television viewers worldwide... Total striking Formula One drivers in South Africa that unless they compete in the Grand Prix there on Saturday, they could face a lifetime ban. All the top drivers due to take part have said they won't compete if they're forced to sign a new super license. They say it's unfair. The license demands that drivers stay with the same team for three years, that they don't criticize FISA, the governing body, and that they reveal their personal financial details before they actually drive. Today was supposed to have been the first official practice for the Grand Prix. The cars and mechanics were ready, but missing from the pits, the 36 Formula One drivers. Led by Nicky Lauda, who celebrates his return to Grand Prix racing this week, they were boarding a bus at the race circuit and going nowhere near the track until they'd sorted out their differences with FISA, motor racing's governing body. So desperate were the organizers to avoid a walkout that they blocked the bus's exit from the course. It was quickly removed, and then a race of an entirely different nature began. Dozens of journalists jockeying for pole position as they hurtled after the bus heading towards Johannesburg. Watching the flying circus, a rather bemused Nicky Lauda. The drivers who lock themselves into a Johannesburg hotel feel their new super license, which they have to sign before racing, damages their chances of signing new and more profitable racing contracts. So our back's been put against the wall, so we are asking for some changes on the super licenses to make it even for the drivers as much as it is for the constructors, and they hope that we can achieve a compromise. Meanwhile, talks between race officials and the driver's representative carried on at the circuit throughout the afternoon. The Grand Prix organizer, who stands to lose a million pounds if the race is cancelled, was particularly bitter. Well, total anxiety and anger, because here we are again with the situation, everything's gone so smoothly up until this point, um, and now we're in a situation which is, I vowed and promised never to get back into again, on, off, and, you know, it's just mind-boggling. And at the end of the day, as the cars were wheeled away, the drivers were given a final ultimatum. Settle by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning or face a life suspension from World Championship Racing. Peter Sharp, News at 10 at Kyle Army Racetrack, Johannesburg. With their licenses between the drivers and the sports governing body.
At one stage, all 31 drivers involved locked themselves away and refused to race. Well, today they changed their minds. The Grand Prix goes on as originally planned tomorrow. Practice took place today, and from Kyle Army, Murray Walker now reports. The totally expected happened because turbocharged cars are on the first three rows of the grid, first to sixth the fastest. Nicky Lauda and John Watson both went off the course in their Marlborough cars, but they're both perfectly all right and will be taking part in the race tomorrow. But in 14th position on the grid, in the turbocharged Tolman, is Englishman Derek Warwick. Well, Derek, you had an incredible experience last night in that Formula One dormitory at Johannesburg. Tell me, what exactly went on there? Um, well, to be quite honest, for me, it was, it was quite extraordinary because you've got people like Villeneuve and Peroni there, and uh, we just sort of messed around and had a few discussions over the various decisions that had to be made. And the biggest point I'd like to make is that um, we all stayed together and um, to a certain extent I believe we won because there is a race to, um, tomorrow. Der uh, Derek, you say you've won. The FISA people say they have made no concessions at all and they're going to discuss it next week, but nevertheless you believe that you have made your point. Well, yes, I mean, we were here to make a point and, I mean, for sure there was going to be a Grand Prix. I mean, that, that never ever crossed our minds. Um, there was always going to be a Grand Prix and there is a Grand Prix and um, I think everybody's respected us for what we've done. What were you doing about sleeping last night? Did you solemnly have 32 beds in there? Yes, we did. It, um, it got a bit uh, sticky in the morning but because <laughs> we had no showers or anything. Um, we just threw a few um, blankets on the floor and all slept down. It was a very unshaven Derek Warwick that arrived this morning. Everybody, I believe, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there we are, we have a South African Grand Prix by the skin of our teeth and after practice had been concluded today in a mixture of wet and dry conditions incidentally in pole position in his turbocharged Renault the man who won the 1980 South African Grand Prix Frenchman René Arnoux four seconds faster than the previous fastest time second on the grid alongside uh, Arnoux was is uh, Nelson Piquet in the Brabham BMW, the first appearance of that car, incidentally. Then in the second row, Gilles Villeneuve in the turbocharged Ferrari, and Riccardo Patrese, the Italian, in his first appearance in the Brabham BMW. Fifth fastest, Alain Prost, who won three Grand Prix in the turbocharged Renault last year, with Didier Pironi, sixth fastest in the turbocharged Renault. The fastest non-turbo car was the Williams of the Finnish driver, Kiki Rosberg, alongside eighth fastest, Carlos Reutemann, second in the World Championship last year. As far as British enthusiasts are concerned, as you know, the good news, Derek Warwick, 14th fastest on the grid in the turbocharged Tolman. Nigel Mansell, only 18th quickest in the John Player Special, all sorts of problems. Derek Daly, 24th fastest in the Theodore, Brian Hinton went out in the Arrows but failed to qualify, although he will be driving for the Arrows team in both the South African races. So, a race tomorrow for sure, but equally for sure, unfortunately, we have not heard the last of politics in Grand Prix. The South African Grand Prix, and apologies for the poor sound quality from Kaya Lamy. If you want to go into motor racing and do a job like this, you have to have your heart and your head 100% for it, the money and all these other things. If you are good, they come automatically. If they are bad, they don't come. to go into motor racing and do a job like this. You have to have your heart and your head 100% for it. The money and all these other things. If you are good, they come automatically. If they are bad, they don't come.